What's up, guys? I'm not at the studio in my uh, Dallas house. I'm here at my new Vegas house, which is under construction, and I'm just using my MacBook um, laptop in a rocking chair. Um, so, uh, many of you have heard that uh, the actor, comedian, and musician, by the way, uh, Dustin Diamond, died of cancer yesterday morning. He's most notably known for playing the character of Screech on the TV show Saved by the Bell. But he did a lot of other stuff besides that. In 2007, I met Dustin. Um, he was a comedian performing at a place called Hyenas in uh, Dallas and in Fort Worth. I have two clubs. I actually have multiple clubs. I used to be a comedian about 20 years ago, and I had uh, I used to host a comedy television show, Spotlight, that was on. And um, so I was really good friend with friends with the owner of Hyenas. Thank you, Dollar Man. You appreciate that. You're the best. So. Um, <clears throat> You know, I, I, all of us there in Dallas are kind of a big family in the entertainment world, you know. And uh, my, uh, one of my best friends was also a guy named uh, Vinnie Paul. He was a drummer for a band called Pantera. And then he was in another band called Hell Yeah. And I worked for his record company from 2006 till 2018, till his death. And did graphics and music videos. Drove his tour bus. Did a lot of things for him. And uh, anyway, it's not about me. I'm just trying to establish how I, I knew Dustin. Uh, I wasn't trying to give you a resume. I, I, I'm sorry. I apologize. I'm just trying to establish, you know, why is Dustin hanging out with Video Bob? Well, because at the end of one of his shows, we went and we invited him to come back to Vinny's. Uh, Vinny owned six different topless clubs. He has one here in uh, Vegas, Chicas Bonitas. So he came to the club with us and we just connected, man. We just were like girlfriends from the word go. Just talk, talk, talked, you know? I do know that DJ Vyrai. How you doing, Joe? How are you feeling? Man, you gotta get your ass out here to Vegas. We'll have a good time. Um, anyway, so, you know, it was just after the show and we just hung out. We were. Stayed up till five or six in the morning just talking. And I think that the reason I identified with him or we identified with each other was because, you know, Dustin had a really hard life and he's a really misunderstood guy. And, and I know you're going to go, oh, he's really hard life, some millionaire rich kid. No, 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 that's really not how it goes. You know, when you're a child actor, you're under immense pressure. If you think peer pressure is bad in high school, Imagine what it's like playing the nerd, playing the heel, playing the bad guy, you know? I miss you too, Joe. I'm, I, I need some goth music in my future. But anyway, um, um, we just really connected, you know, and um, he, he's told me a lot of really intimate stories, you know, that'll probably come out. You know, he, he, had a, he had stalkers. He was almost kidnapped. He had told me about the Hollywood pedophile ring, which is a real thing. And he, he had suffered a lot of abuse, you know. And he dealt with it in the same kind of ways that I did. But I never, I never got into drugs and alcohol and things like that, you know? Uh, Nano Reaper says, I saw Dustin in Dallas. Uh, funny I ran into you there. Didn't know who you were. <laughs> Nobody knows who I am. Anyway, we just connected. So whenever he would come to town, I would come pick him up. Uh, and his favorite thing was Jack in the Box. I would take him to Jack in the Box. And we're going to get into that here in a minute. 
Uh, I've got a great funny video I'm going to play for you if it'll work properly. But anyway, he loved the sourdough breakfast sandwich. That was his favorite thing in the world. He'd order like five of them and take them back to his hotel. <laughs> but now that he's gone, you know, I don't want to besmirch his name or anything, but he, he did have some, a little bit of problems with painkillers and things, you know, and, um, Every once in a while, maybe a little cocaine and whatnot. And, and I had a problem with that because if anybody who knows me knows I don't do drugs. I don't support drugs. I don't hang around anybody who does drugs. And we had a little bit of a falling out a few years ago because he was really down and out. He was really broke. You know, people think that he gets all this money from Saved by the Bell and all this other stuff. It's not true. I mean, what was really hard for him is he couldn't just go get a job somewhere to make ends meet because... You know, then it's in TMZ. Oh, Screech is working as a security guard. Remember when, you know, uh, Arnold from Different Strokes was working as a security guard? And it was like all over the news. It was national news. You know, the poor guy's just trying to eat. Just because you're famous doesn't mean money magically appears into your account. And the other thing is, is people just love to mess with this guy. Just walk up to him and, and treat him like one of his characters that he played in a movie or a TV show or on a reality show. Let me tell you something. Reality shows, are the, that's the furthest from the truth of a name. When I did my reality show, Screen Machines, there was nothing real about it. The customers weren't real. The, the uh, situations weren't real. We would take our car, put it in a junkyard, go pretend to buy the car. The only thing that was real about the show is we actually built the cars, you know, like the Jurassic Park episode. We built that goddamn Jeep in three days. We worked our ass off on that car. That was the only thing that was real. But these producers are like, we don't think people really want to watch you build a car. So we're going to create this situation where there's this fake deadline. There's this fake customer. There's, you know, people are like, why do you still have the car all these years later? Well, because it wasn't real. Reality shows aren't real. Everything you see on a reality show is bullshit the exception of little parts of it. I will say Gene Simmons' show, Family Jewels, was a very real show. I know that to be true. I mean, they force situations, but that's not quite the same. Anyway, the point is, is, you know, Dustin Diamond was on like these celebrity fit clubs and boxing club shows, and they would pay him extra to be the bad guy. He told me he got $50,000 extra to be the, the bad guy, the heel. And, um, you know, he just kind of embraced that character. That was his typecast, to be the dork, to be the, you know, to be the douchebag, because he got good at it, sort of like Danny Bonaduce would do, you know? But it hurts your heart, you know? Like, we were sitting at this bar having a drink, and this chick walks up, she goes, I saw you on the boxing show. Can I punch you in the face? And we're just like, what the fuck is wrong with you? I was unpacking some stuff today, and I can't believe what I pulled out of a box. I'm, I can't make this up. Look at that. He had his own action figure, y'all. Look at that. You know you're a badass when you have your own action figure. I got to tell you, I did not watch this show. I... I was a little maybe out of the age range. I don't know. I just didn't. I, I told him when I met him, I go, I'm sorry. I didn't watch Saved by the Bell. I know you were on it. Couldn't miss it. But I didn't. I've never seen the show. I don't know anything about your character. Uh, I just know you're Screech. And he hated it when people walked up to him and called him Screech. He's like, my name is Dustin. Hello. But I get it, though. I used, to, I used to always bitch at him about that. I said, dude, you need to embrace it. Mr. T's Mr. T. You just need to be Screech, you know. He's like, I know, I know, but I'm my own person, you know. I, what am I going to be, screech my whole life? Zoings. So I'm like, well, is that such a bad thing, really? You know, I don't know. But I've always kind of befriended um, people that were a little different, you know. Uh, like Carrot Top, for instance. I'm not name dropping, but Carrot Top is a guy who, he's a comic, he's a comedic a, com a comedic genius. And, and I don't get why other comedians make fun of this guy. You know, but they're just 
jealous. Jealousy, you know, it's always people that are below you that want to pull you down to their level. The dude's had one of the longest running shows in Las Vegas, hugely successful. And these other, these other comics who think that they're so much better. Well, if you're so much better, where's your Vegas show? You know? But Dustin just didn't want to... let his fans down and he didn't want them to see him in a light other than as a celebrity and it killed him for a while now he's had this lump on his neck and uh, he didn't want to go to the hospital because he was afraid of COVID catching COVID while being in the hospital and he also didn't want it to show up on TMZ and, you know, on the internet and Twitter. And he waited too long to go to the hospital and it became cancerous. And then it spread to his lungs for some reason. And they told him about a month or two ago that he had a couple of months, maybe a couple of years to live. They didn't know. And he was in a hospital in Florida and I was going to go down and see him. And I wish I had Hove now. I should have just went. But you never think you're going to die. He was only 44. I'm 46. I'm just a little older than he is. And you know... The same thing happened to an employee of mine of over about a year and a half ago. He had a, a thing on his jaw, and it kept getting bigger and bigger until it was the size of a baseball. And when, by the time he finally got it looked at and fixed, uh, uh, it had gone into like his lung. Uh, just it went everywhere, and he was dead within days. It was crazy. And my brother died of lung, lung cancer, if you remember, about one year ago in January. And he was having trouble breathing. He went to the hospital. They put him on a ventilator, and they told him that you're not leaving here. First, they were going to try to take out one of his lungs, and uh, but it just once once it, I think it's the small cell carcinoma, it like just spreads. You've heard the term spreads like cancer. It just um, turns your organs solid, I guess is what it does, and it turns your lungs into bricks, and you just can't breathe. And they basically tell you, look, what we can do for you is we can give you a thick little morphine shot, turn off your breathing machine, and you will go to sleep and you will suffocate and you will die. I mean, I just have way too many dead friends. Not just celebrity ones. People I know that have died way too young. And it scares me because I, I am worried. You know, I have diabetes and high blood pressure. You know, my buddy Vinny was only 54. Barely, you know, he's 10 years older than me when he died. But to see what happened to Dustin, he was only, I'm older than him. And he's gone. And like I said, we, we had had a falling out. I don't want to go into too much of the details. But I basically was mad at him because, you know, he kept messing around with painkillers and drugs and things, not heavy, but enough that he was getting himself into financial trouble. And he called me up asking for money. He wanted me to Western Union him 600 bucks. He goes, I gotta pay off this drug dealer. And I said, well, why don't you go pawn some shit? And he goes, I can't do that. Do you understand? If I go to a pawn shop and pawn my Xbox, it'll be on the news. And it wasn't him being narcissistic. He was right. I go, I know. Fuck. I said, well, what do you think the news is going to say when they find out about this? And, you know, then he had that scuffle. He was in this bar. And then, like, he, he just barely had a little scuffle with a guy. And I, I guess he had a knife or something. And he just stabbed him a little or something. I don't know what happened. But 
he got in pretty big trouble over that and had to go to jail. You know, he just had a rough patch there. And I didn't get along with his girlfriend, you know, or she didn't like me much. But that's because she was an enabler. And I used to tell him, you got to get away from her. This clown is going to fucking kill you, dude. She didn't like me much because I cared more about him than his relationship with her. I didn't really have a personal problem with her. I thought she was great. But them together were, were you know, two, it, like that Chris Rock joke says, two crackheads could stay for, together forever. If she can't admit the fact that they were enabling each other and their addictions and their problems, you know, so Amanda, if you're out there, I, I'm so sorry. I feel so sorry. And I just wish things could be different. <laughs> and sometimes I'm not a very good friend because I am somebody who will tell you the straight dope I will not sugarcoat anything. I will not blow smoke up your ass. And sometimes that's just what people need. People need their friends to support their il illusions, delusions, feed their addictions. They don't need somebody to come along and throw a cold bucket of water on them and say, hey, here's reality. Because sometimes it just doesn't work. Sorry, I haven't been reading your comments because I was on a rant. Tyler, uh, Bob, when we did a Periscope a few years back, you connected with me, uh, with John Beamer, who ended up hiring me for a gig. Tragically, John's daughter passed away two days ago. She gave me a Marty McFly keychain. Oh, I'm sorry to hear about that. Tyler, I'm going to be bringing, I just brought the time machine here. It's downstairs, and very soon when we get set up, I'm going to bring you out, and we're going to, go do some Marty McFly stuff. So stay tuned. Let me go back and look at some of your uh, comments that I missed. Sorry, guys. Um, uh, have you had any more uninvited guests? We're going to get to that. I'll be publishing a video right, right after this live stream. I was going to post it, but I wanted to do the live stream first. And I just felt this would be cathartic for me, you know. This is my therapy when I do lives. Instead of laying on a couch and talking to a psychologist, I just kind of talk to you guys. Anyway, um, I guess, if anything, I want this to be a public service announcement. If you have a lump on you somewhere, get your ass to the hospital. Remember when Tom Green had testicular cancer and had to have one of his testicles removed? Or both of them, I don't remember. I know Tom as well, I need to say hi to Tom. But anyway, he did that song about, you know, feel your balls and remember that. I mean, listen, you can't mess around with this stuff. And it was just his procrastination. It, he might have been able to save himself We don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I might wake up with a heart attack tomorrow. I don't know what's going to happen to me tomorrow. <laughs> you never think you're going to die. <sighs> anyway. All right, let's try to um, get a little bit out of... Uh, out of this funk. Let me, let's talk about some good times. So I was uh, talking about how much Dustin loved to go to Jack in the Box. So this, I have a video that I found. We didn't do a lot of video together. Uh, we did shoot a little short uh, for a music video thing that I never published, and I need to do something with it now. And I also did a live DVD for him that we never published because he didn't want to put out his material yet. So it'd be great if we could get a hold of that video somehow and maybe put it out. But um, we, we shot a bunch of really cool video, and I, maybe I'll do something with it. But anyway, 
um, we didn't have that relationship, you know, like we took pictures together at the bar and stuff, just like you do with your friends, but it wasn't like celebrity photo. Hey, look, I'm with this photo guy. And so we didn't do a lot of video, but sometimes we did just goofing around. Well, hey, Terry. Yeah, Terry, I know you've, you've been, you've been through it as well. Even when you're expecting it, you know, even when you know that it's coming. You know, I mean, with Ron, I mean, we, we knew that he wasn't healthy for a long time. You knew that and you were expecting it and he knew it. But when it finally happens, it's like when you have to take your dog and put him to sleep, you know, it's like, there's no, nothing worse than that moment. You got to get your ass out here to Vegas. There's got to be some kind of convention happening out here eventually. Some kind of leather convention or something out here. You got to get your ass out here. We got two spare rooms. You and your dude is more than welcome to come here anytime you want. Anytime you want. Um, okay. I'm going to play you a video. I hope this works properly because I haven't done this before. I uploaded this clip and it should overlay it and I, and I want to, I hope it works. Uh, it was a video of me and uh, Dustin and Rachel drunk off our ass going to Jack in the Box and um, the lady at the window was very rude and the reason I started filming or recording rather was we were having a really bad experience at this particular Jack in the Box. So I thought, I'm going to record this. I wasn't trying to record Dustin. I was trying to record her giving us this bad service. And then it just, then the video Bob kicked in. You know what I mean? <laughs> I couldn't help myself. So uh, where's this video at? Here it is. Video Bob, Rachel, and Dustin go to Jack in the Box. Let's try this out. All right. This is bullshit. <laughs> what happened to my order? What is your, your problem? Because I'm ordering something you guys have had for 30 years and you're telling me you don't have it. And it's pictured on the menu. Let's see. 214, we're going to call and report you. What's the number? 214-213-3543. This is the worst customer service I've ever had in my life. She closed the door on me. Look, she just closed the door. Uh, really? What? Are, what was you ordering, Dustin? A uh, sourdough breakfast sandwich, which is only had by Jack in the Box. There's, they're not. She, I, right, she took the order off, and then she just closed the window in your face. Yes. We can sit here. She's re refused. And let their line back up. It seems like every time we take it to Jack in the Box, there's an issue. Dude, I don't want semen in my burger. All right, I guess we're going to a different one. Yeah. We're going to a different fucking Jack in the Box. Fuck really? That, that phone number right there, it, it, it takes you to an automatic voice message system. Yeah, well, they don't answer this number. Well, we're definitely going to call Jack and complain. You know, I'm a former Jack in the Box shift leader from 1991. <laughs> so I know Jack personally, and I will be calling him and complaining. This is bullshit. I want a sourdough breakfast sandwich. Fuck! I'm getting a new sandwich. Pull up, pull up. Alright. Oh, there we go, there we go. Here we are. Jack in the box. How can I help you? Yeah, do you have sourdough breakfast sandwiches? Okay, what kind? The uh, ham or the bacon? Yeah, um... Mm. Ham, I think. Okay, anything else? For you? Yeah, give me three of those. Um, there are two for three fifty. You want to get four? Yes! Yeah, I want to get um, an ultimate cheeseburger meals, uh, whatever your large size is with a root beer. Thirty pints or regular? Regular. And what kind of drink? Uh, root beer. Like I said. Anything else for you? Uh, yeah, uh, chicken fita pita. Uh, chicken fita pita. Mm -hmm. Do you want anything? Yeah. No. Uh, uh. And um, a supreme croissant. That's it. Your will be 22, 22. Yes. Okay. 
Yes, it will. All right. <laughs> now that's oh, how it's supposed to go down. Service. So much better. Ba she gave me a choice: bacon or ham. That's how it's supposed to go down. Bacon or ham? I'll take ham. Am I being too loud? That's that's how me and <laughs> that's how me and Rachel talk. <laughs> Rachel's fucking her ear like I'm destroying no, her no, ear. No, no, no. I was trying to call their customer service to let them know that There's we no went to one service. and then we went to another. Yeah. The the first customer service is is her voicemail where she's putting it up on YouTube right now. He wanted something off our menu? What an asshole. Yeah, this is how it's supposed to happen. And what was different about this experience? Um, she spoke English. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now that happened as well. Yes. yes. If I order a sourdough breakfast and my, my response is, Is that sourdough baby? What? <laughs> what does Saba Baba mean? <laughs> coolie fries. Yeah, coolie fry. What's a coolie fry? <laughs> That's the fries that Coolio likes. <laughs> How about you, honey? You don't want any coochie fries? No coochie fries. Now she had asked for coochie fries. <laughs> you ever had a you? Did, so you've never had a chicken fajita pita? No. Oh, you the, a fajita? You said fita pita. Chicken fajita pita. No, you're just drunk. <laughs> no fajita. Chicken okay. fajita. Fajita. I don't order all that stuff. Fajita pitas and yeah, you just do the breakfast. Yeah, wraps. Sourdough breakfast. That's it. Sourdough breakfast. Ultimate cheeseburger. Supreme croissant. Supreme croissant's good. You're into the early morning protein. That's good. So is she. And when we get home, she's gonna get some early morning protein. Look at that little smile on her face. Why are you going back to that original Jack in the Box where they put semen in your burger? No, I'm gonna put <laughs> semen in her burger. <laughs> Can, as, uh, can I get a sourdough breakfast the... sandwich with no hair? <laughs> <laughs> All right. There you go. Do I give this to you or do I put it to the thing? I can do it for you. Thanks. There you go. Thank you. Oh, so easy. I love when payment's easy. Yes. Here, swipe this and give me food. <laughs> I give you plastic, you give me eggs and cheese. Yes. I give you plastic, you give it back, and then give me food. Yes. With ham, not bacon. <laughs> <laughs> you should have got some of each. You should have got two of each. <laughs> I, I got four sourdough breakfasts. What do you want? <laughs> and a supreme croissant, and an ultimate cheeseburger, and a large fry. Wait, did you order the ultimate cheeseburger? Yeah. yeah. I'm, putting, I'm putting the supreme croissant in for tomorrow morning. Tomorrow at lunch, I'm gonna eat those two break sourdough breakfasts. Yeah, I'm mm. eating two tonight with the ultimate cheeseburger. That'll be good. <laughs> this dude loved Jack in a Box. <laughs> I'm glad that worked. That was fantastic. Um, I think that was about 2012. Actually, now that I think about it, about 2012 or so, 13 maybe, somewhere in there. Because I still had my Dodge Magnum. I was in my Dodge Magnum. And that was before I got my Cadillac CTS-V, which I didn't get till 2016. So I drove, as a matter of fact, that was probably my first Magnum. I had two of them. So um, this just happened to be a random video that I had. Um, you know, I have other videos. I, I just got to dig them out. It's just what I could come up with while I was on the road that I had, you know, saved on my computer or my phone or whatever for all these years. Because it was just a hilarious moment i actually edited out some stuff that, as raunchy as that was i think i edited out some stuff that was even worse because we were just like uh you know we had just come back from the club we've been drinking been partying and we was ready for some four in the morning jack in the box you know what i mean we've all been there two tacos come on 99 cents bang uh and that's that was what it was like hanging out with dust uh you know trust the dust <laughs> um, you know, when he's on stage doing his comedy act or when he's on TV or whatever, he's, you know, he's turned on. And the same thing with me. Uh, but I have kind of pretty much morphed into Video Bob full time. You know, I'm pretty much, anybody, people know me know I'm kind of like this. I, I'm just, this is me. This is me 100%. I'm not putting on anything for you. This is how I am all the time. Jack's one of my employees and friends. He'll tell you, you know, this is just how I am all the time. 
but if I am performing in some way, uh, much more animated. But you have to be. You have to be, you know. I just wanted to share that little video and talk about my boy Dustin for just a minute. And um, from what I understand, uh, he's not going to really have a funeral. He's going to be cremated. And um, they may or may not have some kind of little get-together thing. And I don't know if I would go to it or not because I'd probably be put off by her uh, or by his uh, chick. And like I told you, I didn't really get I didn't get along with his chick that well, so. Um, anyway, if you have, if you find a lump that shouldn't be there on your body, go to a doctor, go to a dermatologist, have it removed. If you don't have money or insurance, fucking figure it out. Because I've already had three people in my life die from such a thing. You know, my employee Chris that worked for me, uh, same thing happened to him, my brother, and uh, now Dustin, and I'm sure many other people. Yeah, like Jack, come, by the way, you have some lump, some malignant growth, which is pretty much what you're, you are in, in entirety. Uh, you have a malignant growth, growth uh, that's cancerous. It's, it's called your brother. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Will. Uh, but God damn it, get the, just have it removed. Have them cut it the fuck out. You know? I mean, if you've had it that long, you know, but, you know, look how long Chris had that thing on his chin. It kept getting bigger and bigger. And then he had this, like, Baseball side, like half the side of a baseball on the side of his chin. And then they cut out his bone here and then put skin from his leg on there. And then, then it just it just kept going and going and going until he he um, was dead. Anyway. All right, guys. I'm about to premiere... Uh, a video from today that I, I shot today, edited today, and uploaded just now. And we're going to play it right now. I'm going to do a premiere on it in a few moments. And uh, so stay tuned. Thank you to all of my subscribers. Thank you for all the super chats. Thank you to my Patreons, by the way. I have not been on the ball with that, and I promise I'm going to be very soon. Thank you to my Patreon subscribers. If you're not a Patreon subscriber, you can go to Patreon, look for Video Bob, and you can buy me a taco. That's all I ask. Just buy me a taco. And uh, thank you so much for my Patreons, my subscribers, and everybody who likes, shares uh, this video. I'm over 100,000 now, finally. I'll be getting my plaque here in probably a couple of months, and that'll be a big deal. Uh, they're going to come put the carpet in the house on Monday, and then we can start moving the furniture in. It's a total mess. You know, there's like... You know, there's ladders everywhere. There's my TV, and I'm just sitting here in the living room. The kitchen's over there. I just made a pan of cookies. <laughs> I shouldn't be making cookies, but I wanted some cookies. All right, stay tuned. After I close out this broadcast, I'm going to do a premiere of today's video starting immediately after the broadcast, so don't run away. Um... See you later, Terry. Jack. Jack, um, please watch the video and please bring me my vector lights. I will trade you a door for my Indian, for my, I'm going to, let's Indian give each other. You're not allowed to say that anymore, sorry. But I'm an Indian. I'm a quarter Indian. I'm a registered Sioux Indian, so I can say it. So, Bring me my vector lights back so I can put them on my police car and I'll let you have one of the sliding doors. Sounds like a deal to me. All right, here we go. Uh, sound like a deal? Okay. And by the way, I gave everybody at the shop a one week vacation. I told them to take a vacation, chill out. Next week when I get back, we're going to have some time machine specialists coming into the shop to help work on cars and it'd be great if you could be there 
that'd be great. We have to build three cars, but if we can build one, I'll be a happy camper. Anyway, we're having a personal Skype with each other while everybody else watches. Okay, uh, and also Tyler, we'll be seeing you soon. Vegas, baby, here we go. Let me let me end this broadcast, and um, I'll give me just about a minute hangout, and then I'll get that other pre premiered video, and I'll put it like on a one or two minutes. That way, it gives you enough time to find it and and get it all figured out. So, anyway. Let me see. I forgot how to do this. <laughs> Wait, where's the where's the damn button? This is what I this is what I need right there. Hi gang, it's Gallagher. I want you to smash that video bob button and be a subscriber. Subscribe to Video Bob because I know where you live, bitch. Don't give me no back talk, sucker! You, you make, make me, me mad, mad. Hannibal! <laughs>